Hello and good morning, keto peeps. Uh, I know it's been a while. You know, my life's been a, a crazy jumble lately, and sometimes we lose track, and uh, I'm getting back into the groove, uh, trying to make some more videos. I had some stops and starts. I know y'all don't want to see um, outtakes of those. They were mostly awful. So, uh, I usually make a, you know, five keto questions answered, those kinds of things. And I had written down some stuff that I wanted to cover that I felt like some of my clients as well as uh, some of the groups, you know, it came up a lot in the rooms and everybody was kind of confused about it. Um, just things like um, the first one, sticking to it. How do you stick to this? Like when you start, you know, you have all kinds of motivation. Um, especially when you are a weight loss patient, you have all kinds of motivation in the beginning and you lose those first couple pounds because of, um, you know, water. And then after that, you slow right down again. At keto, I try to explain to my clients is not about enormous amounts of weight loss right in the beginning. Um, it's like any kind of weight loss that you took time to pack it on so it takes time it takes twice as long to get it off so it's about consistency and it's about you know managing your program to fit your life and a lot of times what people try to do is cut everything out all at once and that never works so you know I'm, I'm sick of doing this. I'm going to quit. I've only lost five pounds. What do I do? Stalling is, you know, what people call it the most. And it's not really a stall if it's been for, say, four to six weeks. Uh, it's not really considered a stall. Your body has to acclimate every time it lose, loses a pound. So it kind of it has to stop and function at that weight before it decides that it can manage to lose more. So you really have to give your body time to adjust as well. So special announcement. It's all up to you and um, everything I say is not what you want to hear. It never is. Um, you know, but hear me out, you know, um, the old we had surgery for a reason um whatever the reasons you had for getting surgery your own personal reasons um it all comes down to as much as you don't want to hear it and as much as you will deny it it all comes down to your relationship with food and um my best advice for that is from my own experience get support uh, whether that comes in the form of having a real-life buddy, um, somebody to keep you accountable and call you on your shit, um, therapy, counseling, OA maybe, um, it will never be fixed. There will always probably be something that will have a hold over you when it comes to food. And, you know, a lot of people say... No, I I can, you know, I can eat in moderation now. I can have a cupcake once in a while. That might be true right now, but in the future, like I am the ghost of Christmas future, and this is 10 years in, and I'll tell you right now, I had moments where I thought I could eat anything too. The problem with that is it catches up to you, or you lose control of it, or it becomes one too many cupcakes or luckily I have dumping really severely so that keeps me in check but sometimes my mind will override that and say you know what screw it I'm gonna dump but I'm gonna enjoy it and then I pay for whatever I indulge in and that's my own doing you know even if it comes down to having a few tortilla chips with some salsa, you better believe in an hour or two, I am going to be deathly ill.
but I plan for it if I do that. But see, it's not about the food as much as it's about the behavior and your brain. So keep that in mind. Uh, sticking to it and um, realizing that food issues are the underlying issues of weight loss. I'm sorry, I'm jumping around a little. I'm, I'm holding my laptop while I'm sitting in my car. So, um, okay, so the, the, the next thing that I'm seeing a lot of is I'm really tired of eating fats and meats. Um, I get it. But if you switch to a vegan uh, keto diet, it's harder. Uh, it can be done. And I have a client that is a vegan. But the problem is when you are vegan, you're limiting yourself. Now, if you're doing it for moral reasons because you don't want to kill animals or whatever, I get it. I get it. You know, uh, I was a vegetarian for years after weight loss surgery never lost a pound uh, because you depend solely on things like beans and a lot of times those will pack the pounds on too or at least keep you from losing so um i think that if you have a, a meat issue on the moral grounds then yeah you shouldn't eat meat I'm not saying that, you know, you should, but you're going to have to build your keto program a lot differently. Now, for those people that are just sick of meat because it's hard to digest, you can, you can work around that because I know the first five years after my um, gastric bypass, I could not get a piece of meat in me to save my life that didn't give me the foamies, that didn't feel like it was stuck. Um, I mean, it, it hurt to eat meat, and it didn't matter what kind. So I switched to sort of uh, lunch meats, which, you know, they tell you not to eat that because it's full of whatever, whatever. You got to do what you got to do. And so eating, you know, lunch meat a few times a day to get, your, to get the protein in, pick the best of the worst, and I think Hillshire Farms has one called Naturals. Um, that's the one I buy for my husband. They have turkey, roast beef, whatever, whatever. And let me tell you what, I never had an issue with those. And even if you like, instead of just eating them whole, uh, cut them, dice them up and throw them in with some eggs. Um, it's not that heavy meat taste. Like if you're trying to eat a pork chop or a piece of steak or something like that. Another thing I did... Uh, as far as meat goes, was, and it sounds disgusting, and it kind of was, was I would cook uh, a lot of hamburger in the slow cooker, in the crock pot, until it was soft. I mean, to the point of melting your mouth. And then I would use my magic bullet after it was cooked, and I would grind it down to almost nothing. And then I would add that to eggs as well, and I never had a problem with that. So where there's a will, there's a way. If you want to get protein in, you can do it, and you can do it without feeling that really heavy, awful feeling you get in your gut after you've eaten meat. Uh, also try crock pot for everything. Chicken, and double the time. I mean, make it really soft so you can cut it with a spoon. That makes it a lot easier for us uh, if we forget to chew too much, things like that, or, you know, if you don't chew enough, a lot of times m meats like pork and chicken will be very stringy and be hard to get through. So keep that in mind. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is relationships. So I think I covered this once before. When you have weight loss surgery, if you have been a big woman or a big man, and your spouse married you that way or your girlfriend or boyfriend met you that way and that's the way that you know you have been throughout a relationship or if maybe you got married skinny and you know gained a bunch of weight while you were married or whatever together um we had an issue, and I knew this prior to getting weight loss surgery. A lot of people were saying, oh, the divorce rate is really high. My relationship 
went to shit and I don't know why and I can tell you why. So, nine times out of ten, this isn't everybody, okay? This applied to me, uh, applied to a lot of people I know, so take it with a grain of salt. But you go through a transformation. When you go from a 320 pound woman that nobody looks twice at, uh, people scorn you, children laugh at you, um, you know, you have a very different reaction from society when you are a fat woman as opposed to what I am now, which is a tiny woman. So I went from 320 to 124. It took me 10 years. So I had a kind of a middle ground there where I wasn't fat and I wasn't skinny. I was kind of just blah in the middle. But I got a lot more attention even at 180 or 200 than I ever did at 320. And it does something to you. It might be an age group thing. You know, I don't know. I was 40s, so... 30 late 30s early 40s and I loved it I loved it it's intoxicating to have people pay attention to you especially men and when you get a lot of compliments and men look twice at you it can become an issue so I mean I never acted on any of it I loved it and I sought it out for a while and, well, it was confusing at first because, you know, I wasn't used to it. And then I sought it out. And the whole time, my husband put up with me. Um, you know, becoming very narcissistic, becoming very self-involved. We do that. A lot of us do that. You can see why they sometimes will get jealous or say things that are hurtful. Because hurt people hurt. So if your husband or your significant other is saying hurtful things to you, like, you know, you still got a big ass, or, you know, I don't know why you think you're such hot shit, you know, you're, you know, I still have seen you fart, or, you know, I've seen you at your worst, and you're not that big of a deal. It's because they're very insecure and very scared that you're going to start looking and feeling better and dump them. That's the main reason. So you have to, at the beginning of this, have some real tough discussions about I love you. It has nothing to do with what you weigh. You know, um, I understand you're going to go through changes. We had to go to counseling a couple times because it's difficult. You need a third person in there to kind of mediate. Because a lot of times the things that come out of your mouth, they don't understand unless somebody else says it to them. So I could say, this is how I'm feeling. You know, vulnerable. Um, you know, I'm excited about what's happening to me, but I'm scared as well. I, I don't know where this is going. I need you to just hang on and let me do this, whatever it is I need to do, and I'll normal out after a while. But he didn't understand that when I said it to him, but when the therapist would relay that to him in in a language that he understood, I guess he needed to hear it out of somebody else's mouth. You know, she loves you, she's going to be there, she's having a, you know, and I had to make some con some concessions too and, and compromise and say, okay, I'm not going to do this behavior anymore, I know it bothers you. And some of it was as simple as, you know, asking him to take pictures of me when I was in clothes that I could never fit in before. It made him uncomfortable. So, you know, things like that. You kind of have to adapt. And I wanted to keep my marriage. I love my husband. So he was very insecure. I'd been obese as long as we'd been together. And so seeing me like this and seeing men react to me in public also drove him insane. You know, every time I was going out, I was going out to see my boyfriend. I, I had two horrifically challenged children that 
I never got a break from, and yet he thought I was going to have an affair. Look, I didn't have time to wipe my butt, much less have an affair. And I don't need another man. Jesus, one is enough, you know. And I don't want to go through getting to know somebody again. I, I just, there are a thousand reasons why that would never happen with me. So, I said, okay, well, I went through a lot of other changes too because I, I also tackled my alcoholism. I, um, you know, started my sobriety six years ago and uh, continue to be in recovery, but I went through a lot of transfer addictions and I had to work through a lot of those issues. When you're working through any kind of addiction issues, there's always underlying reasons why you do these behaviors. And I know mine. You know, you have to figure out your own, but it takes time and it's never ending. You know, every day I have to work on these things. So when it comes to relationships, if you feel like you need to get help, because it, it will help you. Now, if you've had a bad relationship from the beginning, or you got married for the wrong reasons, or you were on a downward spiral before the weight loss, it could end up badly. So, you know, maybe try therapy. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes people change too much and have to move on. But, you know, I always think that making a concerted effort, especially if you have children, is a, a good idea at first before you just give up the ghost. So, so those are the questions and the kind of the things, the issues I've been seeing in the rooms lately. Um, and I just wanted to put my two cents out there. Um, I know I'm in my car. Today I'm going to the storage unit and we're going to pick up some stuff. We're leaving on Friday for our magnificent giant adventure trip. Uh, we're camping for a week and then we're jumping on a cruise ship to go to Belize. And I'm so friggin' excited. I can't wait. But I will be taping uh, as much as I can because, you know, cruise ship, uh, very spotty internet. I bought an internet package through them so I could get Facebook and stuff. So I might just do some lives. That might be easier than trying to post to Facebook. So um, y'all take care. And don't forget to like and share. My God, I'm almost up to 6K views. I just, I can't believe it. It's not even been a year. Um, you guys are really pumping me up. And when I get back from vacation, um, I wasn't going to say anything until I did it, but I will be incorporating and looking at a business opportunity, um, to have my own private kind of consulting business in Richmond. So, um, I'm very passionate about not just keto, but health wise, you know, allowing people to heal themselves and work with who they are and how they live on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You know, a lot of um, keto coaches and things like that, health coaches, they send you a bunch of papers you know, they talk to you on the phone, maybe they send you a bunch of papers and then you don't get any feedback. And I feel like support and motivation has a lot to do with, you know, how successful you are, especially if you're just starting. So my approach is more of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, because it's locally uh, done. You know, I'll be working within this area. I, I would meet with people and um, like I do with my clients now, I meet with them at the grocery store, we go shopping, I see what they generally buy on a daily basis. And what we do is we alter that to maybe not throw them right into keto right away, uh, but to ease people into it. I find that you get a lot more sustainability if you ease in. And I think it's friendlier than feeling like you have to give up everything all at once. Um, and we've had, I've had some great successes so far um, with this. So, you know, I, I think it's a, I think it's a, a better way of doing it than just giving somebody a paper plan 
you know, and um, sending them a text once a week saying, yay, go you. And you kind of feel like you've paid all this money and you're not seeing any results. Um, and you feel like you're alone. And uh, I, I feel like keto isn't just about keto. It's about healing systems and getting your hormones straight and feeling like you can do this. You know, it's not overwhelming. And especially with weight loss patients that are two, three, five years down the road and they're starting to see regain. You know, I, I love working with these people because they feel hopeless. And then I show them proof is in the pudding, baby. I mean, look at me, you know, 10 years it took me 10 years. Well, it took me eight years to come to keto. But I mean, I'll never go back again. And I, and I learned so much over those two years about not just my body, but how it works differently for everyone. So anyway, that's what's coming up. And if you don't see another video from me, I'm apologizing ahead of time. I swear I'm going to post some on uh, vacation because I want to show you all that vacations are doable on keto. You definitely can do this will be our third yeah, our third cruise. Uh you know, cuz camping is easy cuz I buy all my own food, but cruising, you know, you're at the mercy of the cruise, but they have fantastic food and I'm all I'm not always 100%. Mm -mm. Because we go to places where there's some cultural food to die for and it ain't keto and I don't care. I I measure out, you know, what I can do, um, because I'm below goal too. I can afford to, you know, gain a little bit of water weight. Um, and then I jump right back in, but I don't do it for the whole trip. You know, I have a meal that's not keto, but then the next day I go to their gym or I'm running at five in the morning around the top of the ship. I mean, I don't just eat and go, go lay down. Uh, I'm swimming, we're hiking, we're going diving, we're doing two tank dives at each port this time. So I'm going to be busy and moving and burning. So, you know, I, I, I don't sweat it when I'm on vacation so much as I do when I'm, you know, home. So, anyway, like and subscribe. I love y'all, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.